Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've gotten lots of requests on how to set up a multi-server environment on AppSmith. That is connecting a single application to multiple servers like a dev server or a prod server. How to do all of that within a single application? Well, I'm happy to let you know that there are various ways to accomplish this on AppSmith today. And in fact, we're working on a feature to make this so much easier. I'm going to leave a link to the GitHub issue for this feature so that you can go check it out and let us know your thoughts on this. But today, one way you can go about setting this up is using the Git feature on AppSmith. And you can set this in such a way that you have various branches. You have a dev branch, you have a prod branch, you have a staging branch. And all of these branches are connected to different databases, like a prod database or a dev database or a prod server. You can have all of that set up using Git. If you don't know how to use Git, we made a video right here to show you how to set up Git on AppSmith and use a multi-branch system. But today's video is going to be focused on setting up the multi-server environment without using Git. And this comes with an added benefit of being able to programmatically set what server your app runs on. The only drawback here is that we are restricted to REST APIs, and that's because we need to make use of bindings in the data source. So we can't use things like databases or data sources for this specific method of accomplishing it. And depending on your use case, um, security might be a potential concern. So make sure you check to see if this works for you. All right, so today's video is going to be broken down into three main parts. We'll start by showing you an overview of what we're going to be building. Then I'm going to show you how to set up an active server environment check flow so that your application knows where to go check for what um, environment it should be making use of and then make use of that environment or that resource. And lastly, I'll show you how to use that resource or the actual active server in your application. All right, so that's all we'll be taking a look at in today's video. My name is Confident, and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. All right, so this is the application we are going to be building in today's video. It's a simple application, but it uses multiple environments. And here is the front end for the application. So why this is powerful is because we can programmatically set what environment the application should make use of. So for right now you can see um, this application is making use of the company resource. And if we take a look at the data in the table right here, you can see that we have company data. We have the company name, location site, and all of that information about companies. But we can go make a request to use a different resource, for example. So we can go set a different resource to be the active environment, and the application is going to respect and make use of that active environment. So for example, we can change this to, for example, vehicle. Um, and I'm just going to send this post request. By the way, we're making a post request using an API tool. So we've made a post request to the server. And now the server has responded saying the active environment is now vehicle. And we head back to the application and then do a refresh right here. You can see that we have the vehicle resource as the active environment. And if we take a look at the data coming back from the server, you can see that we have data about vehicles coming back in. We can see the name, the model, the manufacturer type, color, and all of that stuff. So right now, what this allows us to do is to programmatically set what active environment we want the app to make use of at runtime. And we don't need to do all of the branch switching and all of that stuff to get this going. So to show you how we have this set up, I'm just going to show you what we have in the GitHub repo. So I'm just going to open up my GitHub repo. So this is um, GitHub forward slash CEO Kogeno. And by the way, once you get here, don't forget to hit the follow button. All right, so let's head over to repositories. And this is going to be in the multiple ENV repository. And if you take a look at this, we have a couple of branches here. So we have the main branch, which is the entry point for our application. And this is where we go to read or get to figure out what environment is active. And this is where we also set what environment we want to be active. Then we have other branches for the various resources we want. So we have the company resource, we have the user resource, and we have the vehicle resource. And if we take a look at the user resource, for example, so I'm just going to quickly open up the index.js file. You can see that this only has a single endpoint and it's the get endpoint. And what it does is that it returns a bunch of users, 
back to whoever is calling this endpoint. So it's the same for all of the other resources that we have on the application. But if we switch over to the main branch and we take a look at what we have in an index.js file, we have two endpoints. The first is to figure out what is the currently active environment. It's a GET request and that returns the current active environment. And we also have a POST request where we can go to set what environment we want active. So this is how we have our backend set up right now. And we have all of these servers deployed on Heroku. So we have all of these deployed on Heroku. As you can see, we have the main server, which is the entry point. We have the company server. We have the user server. We have the vehicle server. And all of these have been deployed from the various branches we have right here in the repo. We have all of these branches and they've all been deployed at separate servers on Heroku. So what this means is that we can programmatically set what server we want the application to run on. So for example, I can go back and set this to user, for example. And once I make this request to set the um, environment to user and we head back to the application to try to make use of this app, you would see that we have this now set to user and it's going to display user information as you can see right here on the page. So this is what we have set up. Now I'm going to show you how to set up a flow to check for the active server and also we'll lastly take a look at how to use the active server in your application. So to set this up, I'm going to create a new app. So I'm just going to create a new application. All right. And what we're going to do here is create a blank API, which would make the request to try to figure out what server is active. So I'm going to call this get env, right? And for us to figure out what server is active, we need to make a get request to the main server endpoint. So let's um, take a look at this. I'm just going to grab the URL right now. And we make a get request to this endpoint. You can see that it's telling us the active environment is the ME user environment. So we can copy this over, paste it in right here and make a get request right here from within AppSmith. And we can see we have that same data coming back. So now that we are having the data coming back, what we want to do is um, build the application in such a way that it makes a check at the start of the application to find out what environment is active. It gets the active environment, saves it into the store, and then uses it for future API calls. That's exactly what we want to set up. So to do that, I'm just going to create a JavaScript file, and I'm going to call this the utils file. All right. And right here, we would have a get env function, which would make a run to check what environment is active. So let's do a return here, return getenv.run, which is going to call the API we set up earlier. So if I run this, we should have active env. So I'm going to save this in a variable. So this is going to be const data is equals to await get active env.run. And once we have this data back, we can continue building out this function. So what we're going to do here is a simple check um, so that we make sure we are actually having data coming back. So we can say if we don't have data dot active env, what we can do is do a show alert to say no env, and we can make this a warning. All right, and because we don't want to proceed if there's no environment set, we can just do a return here. So this is going to be return, and that looks good. But if we do have an active environment, what we want to do is save it into the store and then proceed into our application. So we can do a store value and save this into the environment variable. So let's say env as the key, and this is going to be data dot active env. All right, so this looks good. And if we go on to run this, we should have that data saved into the store. So what I'm going to do at this point is mark this function to run on page load so that it performs the check every time our application is loaded up. Now that we're getting the active environment, we now need to make use of it. So this is where I show you how to use the active environment server in your application. So let's go in to do that. I'm just going to create a new API. So this is going to be a new API. And we're going to call this get resource. And it's going to make a get request 
to an endpoint that is going to be dynamic so that we make use of the active environment in this request. So instead of um, hard coding the um, environment right here, right now it sets the main, we can just read whatever active environment we already have saved in the store. So we can take a look at what we have in appsmith.store.env and right now you can see that this evaluates to MB user. And whenever we go ahead to run this and take a look at the data we have coming back, you can see that we actually have user data coming back. So this looks good and we can go in to display this information in the application. So I can go in to use this in a table, for example, and let's just grab the table and we can bring in a form widget, for example. So let's bring in a JSON form widget, all right, and place it right here. All right, and I'm just going to link the form to whatever item we have selected on the table. So for the data, this can come from table one, dot selected row, and here we have that user data rendered on the form. Last touch I'm going to make here is get a text widget and say right here that the active environment is equal to whatever we have saved in the store. So this is going to be appsmith.store.env and this is set to um, MD user. One small tweak we need to make here before we finish up the application is we need to head back to the JavaScript file here and make sure that we're calling the get resource after we make the store value here so that after that value is saved in the store, we can actually go ahead to run the get resource query. So what I'm just going to do is add a line that says get resource dot run and we are good to go. So this looks great. And if we go change the active environment, for example, as you can see right here, we have that set to user. So I'm just going to change this to company, for example, and let's hit the send button. And we head back to the application and we do a reload right here. You can see that it's going to try to figure out what server we have active, pull that server and use that in the application. As, as you can see, we have the company resource being used right now in the application, which is actually cool. Um, one small side note is that you might actually need to add an await in front of the store value so that it pauses for the store value to complete saving that variable into the store and then moves on to getting the resource. That's one small tweak you might need to make. All right, so we've taken a look at how to set up a multiple environment server on AppSmith. I hope you found this helpful. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section about this approach. And um, I'm going to see you in the next video. Don't forget to get subscribed, stay safe, take care, and bye-bye.